Great. So as I said, my name is Doug, and I'm with WebConnect. Uh, just a, a few slides about WebConnect before we get into uh, our demos today. Uh, we've been doing P21 related development since uh, around 2006, and uh, all of our versions uh, of WebConnect are built specifically for P21. And WebConnect uh, does run on, on any device, uh, be it a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet, or PC, and it runs real time in your environment uh, with uh, your P21 data. The number of read-write features, uh, some of which we'll touch on today, uh, the broad categories are in uh, CRM, customer relationship management type features, uh, business intelligence, so a lot of reporting and analytics. Uh, we have a module that uh, covers remote ordering, quoting, and CMI, so that would be folks' ability to uh, pass orders directly into Profit 21 using a variety of different tools. We also have a customer portal, so as it sounds, that would be your customers uh, logging in if you were to allow them to do such a thing to either just look up data or actually place orders. And we have uh, some native apps, uh, one in particular related to a uh, service that interacts with the service module in Profit 21, and we also have a VMI application with uh, barcoding, uh, barcode scanning features. Uh, both of those uh, native apps also have uh, offline mode, so if you're in settings where Wi-Fi is uh, at a premium, uh, we've got some offline features as well. Uh, at some point, if you would like to uh, take a closer look at anything you saw today, uh, we've got a few evaluation options. Uh, one option is we can actually set up a Web Connect in your environment uh, on a trial basis, running usually against your play database, so you guys can actually uh, put it through its paces at your leisure and set up users to uh, come in and evaluate Web Connect. Uh, we can also give you, of course, a, a more in-depth demo than uh, you'll see today, uh, either against uh, using your trial or just with our own play database. And we also have a, a demo site that uh, we can set up a login account for you to go in and uh, just actually cruise through our, our demo uh, version of WebConnect that we have running. You can also go to our YouTube channel if you want to see other recorded uh, demos. Today's is also being recorded, so I will post that up later this afternoon, and it will be available if there's uh, others that weren't able to join you today. And you can visit our blog as well for uh, more information about uh, some of the topics and the uh, different features inside WebConnect. Today's agenda will start with uh, a WebConnect demo uh, with Andy. And um, it's, a, it's a demo that usually takes, or can take, 60 or maybe even 90 minutes, depending on questions. Uh, Andy's going, going to try to get through uh, uh, as much as he can in about uh, 20, 25 minutes. I know we have about an hour or so budget for time today. So he will at least scratch the surface. And then from there, we'll pass it to Ewell and Sage, and they will go through the uh, service native app. And we'll close with a, just a quick glimpse at the VMI native app. And uh, we'll pause between those uh, sections for questions, but certainly get questions in the middle of any of this. Uh, don't hesitate to interrupt. So with that, I will pass it off to Andy here. Thank you, Doug. Let me figure out how to do this. Yeah. All right. Great. Are you guys able to see my screen now? Uh, I see a black window, no screen yet. Okay. Have you shared? Maybe I should share. Got not ah. sharing. Share. Share. There we go. There it is. All right, I've got bubbles and bars right. and everything. All right, yeah, so my name is uh, Andy Garrett, and I'm going to walk uh, through just kind of at a high level some of the uh, web portions of the WebConnect system. Um, to touch on a little of the CRM stuff and maybe uh, a little bit of the remote ordering, just uh, give you a high level. Uh, understanding of, of what WebConnect does. Uh, WebConnect is designed to basically connect with Profit 21 and run real time. So you're seeing information that's out of the P21 database, sometimes writing information back to the P21 database uh, for things like CRM uh, and doing remote orders and things like that. Doing updates, uh, we take a lot of the information that's inside of Profit 21 and try to give you views of the information that is uh, going to be really useful to different sets of users. So 
when uh, when I'm logged into Web Tech, I might be logged in as uh, as an administrator, where I would see all of the information inside of Profit 21. I might be logged in as a sales manager, where I would see a subset based on sales reps that are assigned to me. Or I might see uh, I might be a sales rep and just see information that's uh, directly related to me inside of P21. However, all of the views are going to be very very consistent across the platform. So when I'm logged in as an administrator, I would see uh, this dashboard as a home screen, for instance. If I log in as a sales rep, I'm going to see the exact same screen with different filtered data. So it's, uh, it's consistent across the board, uh, lets you do a lot of different things and uh, see a lot of information. So as I mentioned, this is, uh, this is the home screen. It's the default home screen. Uh, and it just has a, a, a summary of information that people find useful to be able to look at. Um, there are ways that we can uh, change and customize this information, and then there are other dashboards in the system as well that you can set up as your home screen. So this might not be exactly what you need to see, but it's a, it's a great starting point. So here I just have some information about announcements uh, and alerts and an order summary and invoice history, aging and opportunities, just uh, charts and graphs other information, things that uh, would alert the user of things that might be actionable. Um, announcements is an example of uh, what we call a Web Connect extension to Profit 21. So most of the data that I'm looking at inside of Web Connect is going to be coming direct, directly out of Profit 21, so like the invoice history. But the announcements are something that does not live inside of Profit 21. They're managed directly in Web Connect. You can uh, add announcements, uh, edit them, push them out to different user sets, uh, but that data is not directly tied to anything inside of Profit 21. There are other examples uh, that are uh, the same kind of thing, where we'll take P21 data and then maybe uh, add some things to it to make it more useful inside of Web Connect or slice it up a little different, those types of things. Um, as you would expect, most everything in here, you can click on something and it'll take you to more information. So, for instance, if I like this company golf outing announcement, if I click on that, it'll open up the actual announcement you can see. So it's just a standard web, uh, web UI. Um, right now, we're looking at this on my laptop, but I could also view this on, say, my mobile phone, and it'll work just fine. So this is the exact same screen. It's just running on my phone. It just refactors everything, so I can uh, I can see it a lot easier on my on my mobile device. Uh, but obviously, for the demo today, I'm going to uh, stick to the uh, the larger view because it just makes things easier to uh, to demo with. So um, one of the examples of things you can do inside of Web Connect from like even the summary pages get to information that might be interesting to you uh, and more actionable and drill down on it. For instance, on the left-hand side, I've got an order summary. It's showing me that I've got 104 open orders, three orders on hold, seven unapproved orders, uh, 57 items on back order, nothing on special, and uh, one item sitting out there on direct ship. So maybe I want to take a peek at what's on hold. I can just uh, click on the three orders on hold button or link, and it should take me to a, um, a listing of those orders that are on hold. So from here, I can... Uh, I can see a little information about it, the customer. There's uh, two different customers, uh, 123 Warehousing and General Products. A little information about uh, the total order, the profit percent, profit dollars, the open amount. And by the way, uh, showing profit and profit uh, percents are uh, something that can be configured on a per user basis. So uh, I may have uh, business rules in my environment that my uh, end users and my sales reps don't see profit, sales managers do. I can turn it off for one or all sales reps and turn it on to the sales manager. So you yeah, definitely that uh, happen. Um, I can click on the button here to get a summary of the order. So these are just uh, the items that are on here by product group. So you can see I've got uh, uh, several different product groups that make up this order that total up to the order amount. Uh, from here I can drill down to the detail of the order. So I want to open the thing up and uh, actually view uh, our representation of the order that's in Profit 21 in a lot more detail. So I click on that, and uh, it, it, there we go. Uh, so this would be a, a summary, a much more detailed summary of the order. Lots of information here for your end users in the field. Uh, the idea is, uh, for a lot of these types of views, uh, if they can find the information here, 
they will not need, especially if they're out in the field, to have to call back and talk to someone in inside sales to find out some of this detailed information. So this is an order detail, so imagine, you know, a customer calls and they're asking about a specific order. Uh, you know, they can absolutely find, you know, uh, what this 31209 item is. Uh, they can see the information that's sitting here on it, the unit price, extended price, uh, what it was, the item, uh, all the information. They get a pop-up. If they want to see more information, for instance, the on hand at the different locations, get an order history of this item. All of this information is wonderful if you're sitting and talking to a customer and not, not having to make at least one call and sometimes multiple calls to back office to get this type of information. Uh, it's, uh, it can be extremely helpful. It's very, very in-depth, lots of information uh, that, uh, that a rep can find using this uh, uh, system. Again, uh, this is just an example. There are a lot of screens like this, but you can obviously see things like uh, shipping information, uh, the pick tickets that are open, and a lot of this information drills down. Very, uh, very encompassing screen. So I'm going to go back to the home screen, show a couple more screens before I, I move it off to uh, some other things here. Another interesting view inside of WebConnect is an example of uh, what we would call another detail screen. So we just looked at an order detail screen, and it represents a Profit 21 order inside of WebConnect. Another really interesting screen is a customer detail screen. So there are two controls on my home screen. One is called declining sales, and one is called approving sales. And what this is basically is it's just showing me a summary of, in this case, year-over-year -year customers, uh, in this case, that are declining in sales. So you can see my uh, customer chop keys is down about $66,000. And then the second uh, a little control on this screen is improving sales. You can see my customer 123 warehousing is up almost a million dollars. really like this example. I'm going to drill down into 123 warehousing. They're uh, my biggest customer. And uh, they, they do a lot of great sales, and they have a, uh, they're, I, I really like them a lot. They, they're my most profitable customer as well. And I can see a lot of the same information I saw on my home screen just for this customer now rolled up. Their open orders, their orders on hold. Remember, they had two, and it shows those two here. Uh, rolling invoice history. We've got uh, a year-to-date sales comparison that I can view their calendar and fiscal. Uh, get information about their last hard touch. That's a CRM type concept for tasks and opportunities. Um, but remember how we had the improving and declining sales information on the home screen? It was a roll up of all the customers and it showed it by the customer level. If I look at this customer, I can see, yeah, they're up $936,000, but there are some product groups that they're falling off in. And one of them, I really love this example, it's in safety gloves. Um, I can see they're down in safety gloves by about $30,000. If I click on that, it'll open up a, a further listing that'll show me the items that make up those sales. And I can see over the prior 12 months, I have sales, and over the current 12 months, I don't. So for this product group in, in, in particular, uh, over this current 12 months, they aren't buying anything. If I look at this monthly, I can see, yeah, in the prior 12 months, they were buying, they were buying, and then starting in February, they stopped buying, and they haven't bought really in the last 15 months uh, anything inside of the product group safety gloves. Well, I know that they still use safety gloves, and here's a neat little chart of it to visualize it. They have to be using safety gloves, and if they're not buying them from me, they're buying them from somebody else. And is that, even though this is a great customer, Am I in some type of jeopardy of maybe losing business from them because I have another uh, distributor that's coming in and selling them? They might start with safety gloves, get to know them. Maybe they're selling them even at a loss, but they're, uh, they're slowly taking themselves in and being able to see some stuff that way. So just kind of an neat BI thing uh, that uh, helps you understand the sales that are going on for your customers. Kind of neat stuff. Again, there's all kinds of tabs here to really dive into what's going on with your customers. Uh, really fun stuff, uh, being able to see a lot of information that you would normally only be able to get to in Profit 21. Again, sales reps don't have to either uh, find a way to log into Profit 21 or call back office to get this information anymore. A couple of other interesting tabs just on the customer details screen before I move over, move on. Uh, we do have an email tab. And what this is, is this is our uh, integration into Exchange. This will roll up emails from uh, the Exchange and actually 
bring it into uh, the WebConnect system if you uh, in, if you would like to turn this module on, and you can actually go through and see a uh, email history that's uh, related to this customer. Another neat uh, extension that's outside of Profit 21 are marketing campaigns. This one is hooked up to Mailchimp, for instance, and it just uh, if you're using marketing campaigns, you can see the results of those campaigns and activity based on those inside of WebConnect. Great information for your sales reps to be able to see this type of stuff. So um, we're here at a customer level. We talked about the safety gloves. Uh, I thought I'd demonstrate real quick um, one of the sales uh, CRM type features inside of WebConnect, and that's the ability to create a new sales call. So we've got the safety gloves uh, issue going on. I might want to start a sales call uh, in WebConnect. And a sales call, is uh, it results in a task in Profit 21. So if you're familiar with opening up a customer inside of Profit 21 and seeing the task history, that's where the sales call will end up. However, there is some uh, extra information that we do inside of the sales call to kind of beef it up a little bit and make it a lot more valuable to you when you're trying to track what's going on with your customers. So in this case, since I started the sales call from the customer detail screen that we were looking at for 123 Warehousing, it pre-populates 123 Warehousing as the customer I'm going to uh, be calling on. And I'm going to put safety gloves as the uh, call subject. And then uh, if I wanted to, I could select a contact ID. I'm going to call Anita Randall. And at this point, uh, I'm going to add a product group. This is kind of a really neat thing that you can do. Actually, I need to save the call real quick first. But we know we were going to talk about safety gloves, so I can actually just go add a product group over here. Safety. So I go, this is a P21 uh, product group, and they were down about $30,000. So I'll add that in here, down in sales, and add that in. So if, uh, if any of you are familiar with opportunities at all, you'll recognize this concept a little bit, because you can do the same thing in an opportunity. And there's a reason we added this in to uh, the sales call, and that's because after I work on the sales call for a while, maybe I make the call and I talk to them, and the customer's really excited about safety gloves for me all of a sudden, maybe they realize that, I've got a different product offering that they, they really like better, whatever that might be. Uh, instead of having to then go create a new opportunity from scratch, I can simply click a button, take the existing sales call that I just worked with, populate some information here, uh, good op, and uh, select just a few minimal things, and, um, and it, it's bringing over the $30,000 size of the sales call. Go ahead and click next, it assigns it to the sales rep automatically, and I've got a full-fledged opportunity ready to go. So instead of the, the long, laborious process that normally takes to create an opportunity, it's, it, can, you know, it took me less than 15 seconds to create that opportunity off of the sales call. And from now on, it's linked. If I go back, if you're familiar at all with, uh, with opportunities in, in P21, you know you can link tasks to them. This is the initial task slash sales call that started this opportunity off. And as you can imagine, uh, there are lots of ways to track sales calls and opportunities inside of the WebConnect UI. If you guys are, are using them at all in P21, you'll know that's a little bit of a, of a, of a, uh, a sore spot inside there. We've uh, expanded this out quite a bit to give you a lot of information. This is an example of an opportunity listing. We have things like an opportunity pipeline that brings back all of your opportunities and puts them in a grid where you can drag and drop them working with them that way. Forecast reporting, win-loss reporting, all these types of things with the opportunities. There are similar ideas for sales calls and a lot of other BI tools within the system. Um, I'm going to take just a couple of minutes and divert off of the CRM side because uh, I'm probably taking too much time. I've got five minutes Doug just pointed at me. And I just want to show a little high-level overview of remote ordering. Uh, it's another uh, component inside of WebConnect, which a lot of people get a lot of use out of. Um, and I want to show you a quick remote order. So to do that, I'm just going to start a new remote order. This is just a way for your reps or customers, if you want to open it up for your customers, to be able to place an order that goes into Profit 21. So this is a remote order form. It's designed to be a simplified version of an order entry screen inside of Profit 21. I start an order by either typing in a SHIP2 ID or searching for a SHIP2. So I'll just type that in. 
And there's my uh, mandatory order notes for this customer. So it's popping those back to me. And then I can start adding items. So if I happen to uh, know an item ID, I can type it in or I can search it. I do know an item ID. Just one, because I don't do well with remembering items. I pop that open, it's going to bring back the item ID, the description, the customer specific pricing. Uh, so this could obviously be a different price for you know, any customer in the system. I can add that item in, rinse and repeat. Uh, a couple of things that are interesting with the remote order form, there are ways to do things like bulk add items from order history. So I can, if, if I know the customer buys uh, things on a regular basis, this is just a quick way to be able to add items to the order. Very important if you're uh, on the road, obviously as a rep, you don't have a lot of time. Uh, go search for items individually. You can usually find them in order history, find them, rinse and repeat, and now you've got your, your building in order. When I uh, notice this, this one's defaulted to a quote, I can uncheck that and it's not a quote anymore. All I do is click confirm and that order is gonna go into profit 21. So the idea is that WebConnect uh, as a whole, when you uh, combine all the components, is, uh, is a very, very, very powerful suite of tools that your reps can use or sales managers or even customers to interact directly with the P21 system and we extend it in ways uh, to, to work with things that Profit 21 actually doesn't do out of the box as well. So with that, I'm gonna stop and open it up to any questions since I kind of flew through things and uh, then we'll move on to some of the native app stuff. Any questions? I think we're good right now. I'm sorry, you think we're good? Yes. Okay, okay. great. Well, uh, I will pass uh, pass this over to uh, Sage and uh, Ewell. Ewell has a couple of uh, introductory remarks, and then Sage will get into the native app uh, demo here. So, all right. Oh, here's Ewell. So um, before Sage kind of jumps into the, the native apps um, and presenting kind of some of the service module, we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the, the, the reason and the kind of business case um, that kind of pushed us to, to create the native app. Um, so we saw a lot within kind of the Epicor world, um, people having difficulty managing, um, having their service reps be mobile while at the same time going into offline situations, having them be able to log, clock in, clock out, um, dispatch them, et cetera, um, and giving them kind of a mobile capability to do all of that that's simple and easy to use was kind of the, the, big, uh, the big driver for, for the native app that Sage is going to push um, and show. And so um, he's going to walk us through uh, kind of the day in the life of a, a, a service tech um, as they're going, uh, driving, clocking in, clocking out, getting information on orders and service history. Um, Outside of this, um, we're not going to present this, but we also have kind of a web version of this for your inside service techs um, so that they can clock in, move things to quality control, et cetera, within your organization. Um, and we have admin functionality to allow your, uh, um, your service dispatchers to be able to place people, look at calendars, look at um, timesheets, et cetera, and manage that um, entire process. And so I'll let Sage uh, take over from here and show, show you guys this mobile app. Okay, great. Uh, can everyone see my screen now? Is that working okay? Okay, yep. great. So what we're looking at right now is just a list of upcoming orders. And um, first thing I want to point out here is that, you know, we're using test data. This is the play database. So all these are super old orders. So ideally, you'd see the upcoming orders or maybe uh, an or a service order that you missed yesterday. And so we color those red because we want those to stand out to the service the service tech, you know, if you didn't finish one yesterday or the, the day before, those are going to be at the top of the screen. They're going to be red. He's going to know he needs to finish that up before he moves on to the next one. So uh, imagine, if you will, uh, the rest of them are just a, a pretty blue color as if they were upcoming orders. Um, you can see one in the middle there, uh, October 18th, 2017. Uh, it's, it's blue. It's because it's the order that I'm actually currently clocked into. I uh, wanted to highlight that so it stood out to the, uh, the text if they need to go back in there and fill out some, some order details or anything like that. So another thing on the screen is a little clock-in button down here. 
So this is actually going to show some other things that aren't orders that I can clock into. So you know, maintenance, training, meeting, driving. You know, let's say I'm driving to a job right now. I'll click on driving. It knows that I'm clocked into an order. It's telling me the order number that I'm clocked into. It's saying, hey, are you sure you are ready to drive now? I can clock you out of, out of the order if that's okay. So I'll go ahead and hit okay. Clocked out and clocked into driving. Great. So let's go ahead and go back to that order. So these actually expand because there may be multiple orders for a customer on a given day. So right now there's only one order, but that uh, little one icon on the left there is it tells you how many orders you have for that customer on that day. So we'll go ahead and uh, go into this order here, bring up the order details. Um, it just has some, some extra information there to let you identify it a little bit better. We've also got the meter that you can update. We've got order status. Since I was clocking into this previously, it has the started order status on there. Um, I can also hold the order, and I can change that to hold for parts. You know, if I decided that uh, I, I couldn't complete this order because I didn't have the right part or item with me. Clock out from here from driving as well since I've arrived at this job. And uh, I was clocked in previously, and it's telling me I have been clocked in for about three hours. So I can go ahead and uh, clock back into that. Uh, if you're going back, then uh, maybe maybe I don't I don't really not too familiar with this order based on those details. So I can switch over. I can see the complaints. I can see the causes, the correction. Looks like this one doesn't have a cause or a correction in the database. Um, I can update these. Go ahead and save that. And we can switch over to history if we want to see. Uh, Anything else for this serial number on this order? It'll bring that up here. And take a look at all the items that are here for this order, and I can update the quantity. Let's say I ended up using this item. Go ahead and change that to a zero. Hit the update button there. And that's that. The only other thing we have here are the contacts for the order, should you need to uh, contact anyone. So that's kind of all the all the uh, functionality there for the service app and kind of the day in the life of the service tech. Um, we also have a calendar view that'll uh, show you orders per day. It's not really useful right now because uh, we have no orders in the play database for 2019. So if there were, you'd see some some icons there for how many orders, and you'd be able to click on a day, and it would narrow down this orders list that you saw at the beginning. It would narrow that down to just orders for that day, so that uh, you know maybe you got a bunch of orders in that orders list. We can uh, find things a little bit easier that way. And uh, from here, they can uh, get directions, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll talk a little bit, if you would, about the uh, offline capabilities. Sure. Let me go back into the order here. So, um, so there's a directions button. You click that, it'll open up Google Maps into uh, the address on the order. And as far as the offline functionality goes, um, it's pretty seamless. You know, whenever you were trying to update something, you saw me clicking these update buttons, you saw me clocking in, clocking out, stuff like that. So whenever that happens and the application cannot reach the internet, it's actually kind of storing all that information locally on your phone. And later, when it detects that you do have internet, then all that unsynced data that lives on your phone is going to get pushed back up to the server. So if you imagine a, a service tech going out to a, a, doing an order in a, in a cave somewhere with no internet, he goes down there, makes all his updates to his order details and stuff like that. Maybe he gets back up, opens up the app, it's all synced up now. So that's yeah. kind of how that flows. And uh, again, all this data is uh, native Prophet 21 data we're interacting with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, great. Are there any uh, questions about the uh, native service app? I don't think so. Not. Okay. okay. Well, we're, uh, we'll finish up with uh, the, uh, the BMI native app. So Sage will uh, show that. 
Start this real quick. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is going to be the demo for a vendor managed inventory application. Uh, here. Okay, how about now? Yeah. Good. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, very similar order screen to the last one you guys saw, except for this time it's not pulling down orders from Web Connect or Profit 21 or anything like that. You're actually going to be creating the orders on your phone. Uh, imagine a, a VMI guy walking through a warehouse. He wants to scan a bunch of barcodes and create orders out of that. So that's kind of what's happening here. Uh, I've got three different sections here on the screen. I've got in-process orders. I've got pending orders and I've got completed orders. So the in-process orders are the ones that I'm currently trying to make. I'm walking to the warehouse trying to scan stuff on. Uh, pending orders are orders that I've completed. I've sent up to the to uh, Web Connect, and Web Connect is working on getting those imported into Profit 21. And then once those are actually imported into Profit 21, they'll show up under the completed orders section there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start a new order here. There we go. Okay, and this is actually mirroring my phone here. I understand the frequency there's a little jarring, but uh, got some barcodes here that I can go ahead and scan. You know, the quantity, I'll get two of those guys. Get one of these guys. Maybe get one of the smaller ones here. Let's do eight of these. So I can swipe over to the items list screen here. I can see all the items with the quantities that I've just scanned. Um, if a customer asks me for an item that they don't necessarily have on site there, or they don't have a barcode for it, I can always search for that item. A, B, C. And I can add it that way. And then uh, also on this screen, if I need to change any of the quantities or maybe I accidentally scanned one I didn't mean to, I can update the quantity there, update, maybe I can remove one there, and uh, just kind of manage all the items on my order that way. Once I've gotten all the items that I need, I can swipe over to the summary screen and select my customer, ship to, contract, and PO number. So let's do this for Parker EPD. It, uh, now that I've selected the customer, it's actually gone and fetched the ship to and contract information for this customer. Looks like Parker only has one ship to location. And again, this is a test database, so I don't, none of these orders have uh, contracts on them, but imagine, if you will, some contracts in there. And then I can uh, do a PO number here. And then once I have that all filled out, um, if I need to send an email to first get a PO number. I can do that from the application here. Um, so what's happening here is it's giving you a manual input for an email. And it's also going to give you a list of emails that are on the contacts for this order. So I can either select that contact there or I can enter my own and then just hit send. And it'll send an email showing just all the order details, all the items that you ordered and stuff like that, so you can get either confirmation or a PO number or approval or anything of that sort. And then we also have a contact screen here to the right that will show you that contact that we just selected. 
But uh, you know, once we're done with our order, we can go ahead and uh, finish up the order there. It's going to change into a read-only mode here in a second. There we go. And it's going to switch me back to the main screen. And now you see I have an order in the pending orders. So that's working on getting, getting imported into Profit 21 now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sage. Any uh, questions on uh, the VMI native app or uh, anything else you guys have seen? Uh, um, yeah, so I have a couple questions. Yeah, so for the VMI piece, I get the scanning the barcodes. Is that using just the camera phone, or is there an attachment to go on your mobile phone for scanning? Nope, that's just using the camera phone's camera. Nice. Okay. Um, okay, utilize contracts. So is, I guess it's kind of like the native app, if you're not connected to the internet, does it start storing and once you get that connection, it uploads to P21? Yep, it works the very same way, yes. That's kind of all I have right now. That's, I mean, they're, thank you. That's actually a nice little system. Yeah, no problem. You bet. Uh, Debbie, anything, uh, anything else from the group there? Don't have any questions. I actually kind of posed the question as you switched over to the VMI piece, and it's from the actually it's a native app, the service application. Do you have many customers utilize that for a time study efficiency purpose? Because I was thinking our warehouse, so at least where we are, really we have all this capacity, and yet you ask the warehouse guys, and they're busy as all get out and actually kind of putting a proof in the pudding kind of thing, having them punch in and out based on jobs they're working as they're picking and packing and shipping, punching in and out. Do you have customers that utilize it that way or metrics or so right analytics? Now, that we, we actually were capturing timestamps of kind of all the actions that are happening. So I'm not sure if this kind of helps with that, but you can go in and see, you know, when was this item scanned? When was that item scanned? When did they finish the order? That kind of stuff. Yeah, and we are doing some analytics based on punching out, punching out, or clocking in, clocking out, especially like windshield time, you know, especially for the external service reps, um, kind of how much time are they actually spending in front of customer doing value added time? Um, and for the internal service people, uh, how, how are we spending our time and is it well placed and valuable? Um, and are we, you know, the, what, what is the total cost to serve for this customer versus that? Um, in comparison to actual time spent. And so what it gives us is a kind of a rich capability to take all of that data and do extensive analytics with it and kind of uh, pivot through it um, with that. So. But this is Andy. Uh, so on your question, are you talking about um, more of a warehouse management tool where you would be tracking the people that are picking items inside of your warehouse and figuring out what's taking the longest time? based on maybe an analytic of, you know, different items in your inventory or uh, so it's a kind of not really a service. Uh, no, yeah. it's, not, it's not a particular service, but based on the way you were doing the demo, I was thinking, okay, if they're working on a particular customer and putting an order together, so you start, you're on that customer, one's going to give you time how long you're spending in aggregate on a particular customer. And then if you're able to track lines picks, so per order, 10 lines, five lines, so you can kind of get down to how long it takes on average to pick a line item on an order. Mm. Does that make sense? I don't think I'm explaining yeah, that well. Yeah, so with that, I'm just trying to think through the process of how that would work. Uh, are you thinking they would have a very simple little application that would, when they start picking something uh, in the warehouse, they would clock in and then clock out when they're done, or uh, how, yeah. would you, how would you do that? Okay. So, as soon as you're done, you're like just sitting and ready to go. Okay. I think, this have well, I think this dovetails well into, I mean, you know, these are just some examples of the native apps that we've created. Um, and we do quite a bit of customization uh, throughout kind of our entire ecosystem. Um, so something like that would be uh, something that would uh, fall really nicely within kind of the ecosystem and that we would be more than willing to look at. And so, we kind of um, a lot of times have uh, some business drivers uh, from our customers that say, you know, these are the needs that we're trying to accomplish, and we kind of provide that technical capability. So. Yeah, and then we can provide you, uh, 
with a myriad of different ways to see that information either inside the Web Connect UI or uh, you, you know, we could uh, just store the data somewhere if you wanted to put together, a, you know, some type of portal even inside of Profit 21. Uh, so there's lots of different ways we can consume the data after we capture it. Okay. So I'm going I'm to flip flop on you. I'm going back to the VMI app. Um, where I go? So the scanning of the barcode labels. Does it have to start from fresh? So say you implement at a new customer. Does it have to create labels new out of the gates, or can you use? We'll take existing labels we have in our warehouse or at a customer site where we're scanning bins. Um, so we uh, we can scan any barcodes that do exist, um, but we also have within our software suite the ability to create barcodes off of kind of any data in any style um, that uh, that you need. So if you have existing barcodes, we can read any barcode type uh, from QR code to code 128 to whatever it is. Um, but if you are needing to create barcodes, um, we do have a tool set in our CRM that allows you to to take data. Um, and print barcodes in the style that you want. Um, and so uh, you kind of have dual options in that area. Okay, I think my question is geared like kind of like a plug and play, so we don't have to recreate anything. And I'd like if you just, if we went with the product, it would be almost as trying to make it a plug, a plug and play as easy as possible. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, if you have been bin labels or if you have item IDs in your barcodes or if you have kind of whatever way that we can correlate um, that barcode to Profit 21 data, we can take it that way and be able to port it in. Okay. I think I'm good on questions. Anyone else? Have you done anything with um, receiving with this type of technology, where like if somebody had a phone at the receiving location in a branch, that they could do that to receive items into the system? We haven't done anything explicitly in that area, but um, if Profit21 allows us to import in the data, um, we have the capability to access any data. Um, and so as long as we can scan it and Profit21 will let us import it in using their import service manager, um, generally speaking, we can kind of accomplish whatever business need we need. Okay. I think we're good on questions here. We greatly appreciate the time and the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Get in touch if you have anything else, and uh, I'll let you know about the recording uh, when it's available. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Have right, a great day. Day. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Sure, that'd be good.